Is there a word from the Lord? Get your phone, your iPad, your notepad and pen, and of course, old school, your Bible. Let's sit back, relax, as we dig into the Word of God. Yes, there is a word from the Lord. Hello there. My name is Pastor Randy Smith, and I'm coming from Jesus Christ Center Ministry International where Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows. I just want to say, first and foremost, welcome, JCC, JCCMI, and welcome to those abroad. Um, it is my pleasure to bring, to break the word of God to you today. And, um, and I want to continue on my topic, faith in the time of crisis. Amen? And our scripture reading is coming from 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. And I am reading this out of the King James Version, the 21st century. It say, This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of, of their own self. They shall become covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truths, truth breakers, false accusers, without self-control, fears, despisers of those who are good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof for such turn away. Now I want to I want this is my part 4 of faith in a time of crisis. And what is crisis? Crisis is a time of intense difficult difficulty or danger. I'll say it again. Crisis meaning a time of intense difficulty or danger. And I use this to say that right now, the time that we are in, it is a crisis time. And I like what Timothy said. Timothy said, it is perilous time. And the word perilous meaning full of danger or risk. Amen. Now, for us to survive as Christians, for us to survive, what we need to do is um, we need to build on a foundation. We need a foundation, and I call that's the reason why I call this faith in the time of crisis. And why faith? Because faith is very, very important. Amen. Um. So let's look at um. Romans ten seventeen. Very, very important. Romans ten seventeen says, "So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing." The word of God. Very, very important. How do faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Very, very important. Another thing that we need to remember is that the message translation in, oh, and I love this scripture, the message translation in 2 Timothy 3.16, it's saying, every part of scripture is God breathed. It is useful one way or the other for showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistake, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped for the task God has for us. Now, one of the reasons why I love that scripture is because it said that this word, say it is God's breath. Now, I love to start off with the word for it's because, that's because we remember now, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We remember that now. So, with this word, this word produce faith. Now, we hear words, but they are not the word of God. They are just word of man. Like I heard the news um, today, and they was telling us that men do not have 
any cure for this disease, which to them it might be so. But now we have to bear in mind that this Bible have truth in it, this Bible have life in it, and because this Bible have truth and this and it have life, listen what the Word of God would say. It say in Isaiah fifty three, it said, "By His stripes we are healed." That's what the scriptures say. But then man will say, yeah, but this corona, it is no cure. But then we know that Jesus is a healer. We know that every disease was put on Jesus, according to Isaiah 53. So now, what are we going to accept? Are we going to accept the word of man? Or are we going to trust this word? Now, I know some of us will say, but this is just a book. Some of us think that this is a storybook. But... This very book changed my life. And, and I wouldn't stop talking about this book because it changed my life. So let's talk about this faith. Let's talk about this faith. Um, I love this scripture in John. Remember now we're talking about faith in the time of crisis. Now it's a scripture in 1 John. <laughs> 1 John. And listen what it say. I read it was four and five. Reading this out of the message translation. It say every God begotten person conquer the world's way. The conquering power that brings this world to its knees is our faith. You hear that? <laughs> the person who wins out over the world's way is simply the one who believe Jesus is the Son of God. Now y'all hear what that say? That tell us that the man, the, the man or the woman of God who are faith in Jesus, he could overcome this world. He said we could bring this world to his knees. Now, let me give you a descriptive about what that's saying. We could take me and um my let's say my boy we could lock hands and we could squeeze like how they do in wrestling and the one who add more pressure will bring that person to their knees. So that's what that's what this is saying about our faith. Our faith could literally bring the word to his knees. I love that. We could literally bring this word to our knees as Christians. But now we have to believe this. And that's where we go wrong because we think this is just a storybook. But no, if the Bible tells me faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what I need to do, I need to get this down inside me. I have to keep hearing it. I have to keep hearing and that's how faith comes. Now, People believe that things just happen by chances. That um, since God is in control, just talking about the sovereignty of God, since God is in control, he knows what is going to happen, so we don't have a part to play. But no, we do have a part to play. And every promise in the Bible is based upon God doing something, we doing something. We can't forget that. The woman with the issue of blood, she heard of Jesus. Remember now, she was sick for 12 long years. She ain't had no more money because she gave the doctor all the money. But now here it is now. She heard of Jesus and she saw him. And she said, boy, if I could just touch. Here it is, this lady. She heard what Jesus preached. So she might not have... The word of God there, but yet she had the living word because he was preaching in the synagogue and so forth. And the Bible said, for she said, if I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And guess what? She had what she said. She did what she, she, did what she said and she got a miracle. Tell Jesus even felt that virtue had come out of her. Now, think about it now. If she haven't heard of Jesus, she might not even did those stuff what she did. Because a lot of people was touching Jesus, but what made her different? And Jesus said, the most powerful thing in the world, your faith has made you whole. So what did she did? 
she brought the world to its knees. Why? Because she used her faith. And that's how this work. That's how God have this thing to work for, 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 for us as believers, for this world to bring it on its knees or the world way, we got to have this faith. And so what is this faith? We know that faith cometh by the word of God. So, but what is faith? I call faith is a spiritual force. Why I call it that is because faith could be activated by your voice. For she said, if I may touch. So she used her faith and then she acted. What she did, she gone and she touched. So faith worked by voice activated. Faith worked by motion activated. And then she did. And that's how she got a healing. And if we won't get anything from God. We just can't say, well, anyway, when God do it, no, it don't work like that. Promises are based upon you doing your part, God doing his part. Amen? Salvation was the same way. Jesus went on the cross. That was his part. Now we have to accept him. That's faith. We have to accept what his words say according to Romans if I confess. And that's what we do. So I know religious people who who just like to knock other people will say things like, well, if since God is sovereign, he would do this. No. The Bible tells us that in Luke 6, 38, he said, give. When, and then when I give, it shall be given back to me. See, that's the promise. The promise is when I give, he give back. You see that? He said, man will give unto your bosom. So what he can do? He will touch man. Or he'll touch human. In other words, he'll touch them and then they would give unto you. That is based upon promises. The Bible is based upon you do your part, God do his part. Actually, God has already done his part. He already sent Jesus on the cross and that was for our healing. That was for our poverty and, that, and, and for our prosperity. And that was for the blessing. He went on the cross... So now, now our part is just receiving. Hallelujah. Just receiving. And receiving or receiving works like this. We we um or oh, we make it so hard and we make things so difficult. Receiving is very easy, but we make it hard. We go to the word of God, we believe that promise. What we do, we meditate on that word. When we meditate on that word now, it can be started to come alive in us. Why? Because we are spirit beings. And because we are spirit beings, this is where our faith comes from. Because when we was born again, according to Romans 12, 3, God give, dealt to every man a measure of faith. So we have that inside us as born again believers. So now how are we going to activate this now? How are we know that in this crisis time now, in this perilous time now, how are we going to activate it? Again, if voice activated, motion activated. Voice activated that we have to say what the word of God say. Simple. Say what the word of God say and not what man say. What man say? Huh. Oh boy, my foot is killing me. My back is killing me. Where we get that from? And we wouldn't want a back to kill us. But we say to us, boy, you tickle me to death. Now, they are words, remember now, in Mark 11, 23, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he said, no man, either of you hereafter. So in other words, right, when Jesus spoke, <laughs> no man, eat there hereafter now let me show you a powerful scripture it come out of Matthew but it saying something different but it is it in the same case when Jesus spoke to the when when Jesus spoke to the three and it is in Matthew and Matthew 7 here Hold on now, think I 
miss that scripture. But anyway, in Mark 11, we could go back to Mark 11. <laughs> Mark 11. And I say, Therefore I say unto you, What thing soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. That's what it say. Now, what Matthew account was saying, Matthew was saying, when the disciples saw that when Je after Jesus spoke to the fig tree, then it was the next day. And they say, oh, master, look at the tree that you cursed. And in Matthew account, Matthew said, he, he said in Matthew, said, you don't have to just say to this three. He said, you could say to this mountain also, be thou plucked up into the sea. Now, I love that what Jesus said, because what he is saying is the tree incident. Ah, oh, that's easy. Now, let me give you something harder. The mountain is more. So what he is saying is, now I give you something even huger or something even larger or something even broader that you could say to the street, man, that ain't nothing. Now you could say to this mountain also, and he give us that power. As born again believer, we have that faith. That faith that what Jesus gave us, he said, we can speak to mountain. You call that mountain moving faith. So whatever the circumstances is, listen now, perilous times, we know this perilous times. Why? Because we know that, we know that it is dangerous and it's a risk. We know that jobs are closed. We know that, um, we know that um, some people haven't been, haven't woken from March and so forth. But now, where do your faith come in now? Your faith coming when you said, now, you know what? Heavenly Father, I haven't work. And I find out and I realize that I have the same faith that Jesus had. I had the same faith with the apostles have had. So now I'm going to speak to my situation. I will speak to myself if I need insight, if I need, um, if I need wisdom. Father, you're, you, 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 you know it all. So I'm asking you to help me in this situation. And guess what? He'll do it. He will answer you. He will give you wisdom for anything you need. I cannot just tell you. You need wisdom in whatever the, whatever the situation is. You need, you need finance. Well, they call this a time of farming. I guess what? I know a man in the Bible that it was farming too. And he was blessed. So why that can't be you? Why you cannot go into the scripture and do what he did? This is what I call seed. The word of God. Seed. And it's good seed. And when you plant that, wherever you plant that in your heart, it will grow. And the bird will lodge. You will have shade and so forth. You will have fruit on your tree. And when it drops to the ground, there are, there are more trees. That's just how powerful you is. So now, in this situation, phew, this, this, this COVID is nothing to God. All of this COVID is is a tree. <laughs> but he said you could speak to the mountain also. This COVID is nothing. It's nothing to believe us then. So we don't have to get bent out of shape. We don't have to. Because what the word say? What the word say? And, and since this is not time to get relaxed and get scared and get bent out of shape, this now is the time that you get into the word. Um, I was cracking this little joke. I said, um, I love Starbucks. I really do love Starbucks. And um. I haven't drank Starbucks but for three months. But that's how long this going on. And I said, I feel like I got it vain out of me. And two gentlemen at work, they were saying, um, where they, when the number house was closed, and the guy said, my God, I had more money. So that made that place was taken away from him. So now look, we could learn in this pandemic. We could learn stuff. You know, I learned that I don't really need Starbucks. 
they learn that they really don't need the number house. So just think about it. They're always learning experience. You know, learning experience. So and 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 this COVID man, some people don't like being home. So now here it is, now they get time to spend with their family. This is a good time to get to know your loved ones. So don't look at this like something bad. This all they could be good in this. If it was good for the farmer that a guy could be blessed, why can't you be be blessed in this time? Sometimes all we need to do is this uh, this our time we could even spend with God. Some people who haven't been working this your time to spend with God. I, I, and I tell a friend, I, I said, man, you haven't been working, so this is your moment to take over the world. You're supposed to be getting ideas and so forth. Get some ideas. And, and, and when you come out, you come out on top. But this ain't no time to just, oh, this COVID come now. And this amount of people die. But that don't have to be you. Hallelujah. Don't have to be you. So now, about this faith. God has dealt to every man a measure according to Romans 12. Three. We have this faith. We have this mountain moving faith. We have this faith that we could speak to. Jesus spoke to the wave. Jesus spoke to a tree. Jesus spoke to the dead. We have that same power. He said here in Hebrews, he said that the world was formed <laughs> by the words. Let's go there. That's Hebrews. 11 verse 3 through faith we understand that the world was framed there was what fabricated there was formed there was manufactured there was produced in other words the word was formed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made by the things that do appear and that same we have that nature of God in us born again believers and not just born again believers because some of us have the nature of our um of, our, of their father which is the devil and he have converted faith so think about it now so you still could have what you say because if you say negative you will have that the bible said um by your mouth by the words you say you could have what you say so what you what are you saying what are you saying, saints? You, you, you're saying, oh, this thing come and, and nothing positive, nothing positive. Everything is just negative, damnation, damnation. And all that it is is grumbling. What happened to the children of Israel? They stay extra because of the grumbling, the complaining, the murmuring, the backbiting. Why are we doing that? Why? In this time, you know what? We're supposed to flourish. And we're supposed to shine. We're supposed to come out not even burn, not even smelling like smoke. But some saints, this crisis time is the right time for us to really show, show Jesus inside us. My God, just to, just that um, when we step in the place that here it is now, the glory come. My God, the glory, and that come and and you know and that change thing. That, that that's what saints supposed to be doing, changing things, not just going along with what what, what this person saying, that person saying. No, 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 it don't work like that. Saints, it's a good time. Now, I got seven more minutes. I won't read this. Huh. Remember what I said in First John. Now, James said something here too. I like something what James said. And James said, don't fool yourself in thinking that, reading this from the message translation, say don't fool yourself in thinking that you, ha you, have a you are a listener when you are, when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. My God, you act on what you hear. That's what it's saying. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are 
what they look like. That is powerful. In other words, when you don't hear, when you don't hear this word of God, or once, or if you don't remember this word of God, it's like you looking in the mirror, and in two minutes time, you don't forget what you look like. My God. But whoever catch a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the word of God, the free life, even out of the corner of your eye, even if you get a little glimpse, and even if you see it from the corner of your eye, that's what it's saying. And stick with it. You have to stick with it, saints. It's a stick with it. And no, and is no distracted, scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action. So in other words, you have the act on it. That person will find the light and affirmation in his action. So in other words, you just can't say, well, anyway, oh, by his stripes, I am healed. And then when the pain come, oh, I'm sick. I think I'm going to die. No, no, no. You're the man who look in the mirror. And then in two minutes time, you don't forget. No, what you do is even when the pain come, say, my God, oh, I thank you, Lord. For your healing power, for your healing grace. This is what you do. And you say, but that didn't make any sense. Well, listen. We done read scriptures on. You could have what you say. You could have what you say. They are principle based upon you do your part. God do his part. Simple as that. Ain't no cutting around that. You know where we go wrong? We go wrong because we think that. This is a fact. This pain is in my body. Or this COVID is a fact. Yeah, but listen. You know, it was other plagues. What was worse than this? And a lot of people lost their lives. And guess what? A lot still live too. So we don't have to just take this and embrace this. You know, like um, some people, when they're sick, I like to tell them um, they love to embrace sickness. They put silk pajamas on and they play blues type of music and then they make their face look down and so forth no you don't do that you don't do that if you know where sickness come from you know what you don't accept that my god you don't accept it and that's what you do but we have this we just like to accept these things because why no you don't have to saints jccmi you don't have to Fade in the time of crisis, or what it meaning is, listen here. I'm going to listen to this word. I'm going to get this word deep down inside me. I'm going to come out as a faith giant. I love that. I'm going to come out. I don't care what the circumstances is. I don't care what the situation is. I'm going to see things through the eyes of faith, through the lens of faith. I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I'm just going to be moved by what this word say. And what this word say is, this is blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And that's what it is. And that's all what it is in a time of crisis. So saints, we have faith. Now it's time to let our faith loose. And how we let it loose? By what we say and what we do. As action, motion, or um, activated, voice activated. We are not going to say things what we don't want. We are going to say things what we want. We are not going to make things sound good. Oh, this is killing me to death and so forth. We are not going to do that, saints. We are the saints of the Most High. And, and now is the time that, you know what we can do? We can practice our faith. This is what it means, fighting the good fight of faith. How we can deal with this now? With this situation, this is nothing. This is nothing. This is not a, this meaning I'm going to prosper. I'm not going to be sick. My God, and I'm going to win people into the kingdom of God. That's what I'm going to do. And, and guess what? That should be all our motto. That should be what all, us, all the things supposed to be doing. We supposed to be saying, you know what? Oh, Father, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for you. And let's get over ourselves. Before I end, let me read the scripture again. Second Timothy, no, um, Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. 
for men to be lovers of their own self. Now, when that say lovers of their own self, listen to everything now. So whatever he's about to say right now, he's going to say this would make us lovers of our own self. He said they can become covetousness. In other words, it's going to become greedy. They can become boasters. They can become proud. They can become blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Oh my God, so much people are unthankful. But that's what makes you lovers of your own self because you're unthankful. My God. Listen what it says. They can become unholy. What is the opposite of, of unholy? We need to become holy. Listen what it says. Without natural affection. And you all know what that is. Without natural affection. Affection that is natural. In other words, I have affection for my wife. It will be unnatural if I have affection for somebody else. Or from the same sex. Well, anyway, we could go on. We can become truce breakers. Oh, a lot of people don't keep their word. They can become false accusers. We know what that is. Without self-control. Without self-control. They can become fairs. They can become despisers of those who do good. My God. They can become traitors. They can become headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness and denying the truth and the power from such turn away. My God. From such turn away. Listen. Listen, saints. What we do. Listen, saints. What we do wrong is that we become lovers of ourselves. We need to become lovers of God. We need to become lovers for other people. That's all what it takes. But some of us are we are boastful and we are proud and we are truth breakers. We don't listen to this word. So what would be the antidote? So what was Paul telling Timothy? The antidote was and we can get and it'll always be this. It will always be this and nothing else. He tell him in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Listen what he tell him. He said, I know perilous time coming. I know Corona is coming. I know it can be a downfall in or a downfall in the banking system and so forth or in tourism and so forth. I know y'all get y'all can kind of, who those who work in the tourism industry. I know, I know that time is coming and y'all will not be working. So what to do? What to do? Here is the answer. Here is the answer. Here is the antidote. And I, and I stop right here. He tell Timothy. He said every part of scripture is God breathed. It is useful one way or the other. Watch out for showing us truth. It can be true in this situation that we will get out of this situation. Exposing our rebellion. What you think that mean? That mean it? some of us are just plain blank rebellious so what what paul so what are you telling me in other words go look for your rebellion in the word and you know what to do deal with it what would be those rebellion the same stuff would we read in um in timothy the haughty the headstrong the traitor the um um lovers of the of their own self boastful proud blasphemous disobedient the parent that's it right there they're the rebellious right there so and listen what he said we could correct our mistake. This word will help us to correct our mistake. And some mistakes in our lives would need correcting. What will do it? The word of God. Not Dr. Phil. Not Oprah. Not the Punch. Not the Tribune. Not the Guardian. Not our Prime Minister. But the word of God. And listen what he said. Training us to live God's way. Through the word we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. I hope you were blessed. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that in this time, in this time, whether we call it crisis or perilous time, that this will be your time to shine. I hope you was blessed. So glad that you joined us for this time in God's word today. And we want you please to go ahead if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International. Subscribe.
to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows.